All right, so in part one of the video, we looked at market failure. So in this video, we're going to look at what the government can do to address market failure. Here's the first example. So uh, subsidies. So the government can introduce a subsidy for married goods, such as education. All right, so let us look at the impact of a subsidy. So let's say the market decided that the price of education should be uh, 5,000 at a given quantity. So the subsidy will then re um, result in more supply for education. All right, so the subsidy will shift the supply curve from S to S1. And we will now have a new equilibrium price and a new equilibrium quantity. So we have a new equilibrium quantity, let's say, at 14,000. And we've got a lower equilibrium uh, price at 4000 for example. So what the subsidy does is it lowers the price and increases the quantity. And this is what the government wants. The government wants people to consume more of the married goods. So by introducing the subsidy, the supply curve shifts from S to S1. This lowers the price of the education so more people can consume education. For demerit goods, the government can do the opposite. For demerit goods, goods such as alcohol, cigarettes, which are bad for society, the government can introduce a tax. And what the tax will do is it will reduce the supply. Remember, some suppliers don't want to pay this tax. They don't want to pay the tax, so there will be less supply now for these goods. So the supply curve will shift from S to S. One. Now, remember, this is the original equilibrium price. Let's say uh, the price was 80 rands for cigarettes or uh, 20 pack of cigarettes. But after the government has introduced a tax, right, we will have a new equilibrium uh, price and a new equilibrium quantity. So let's say the equilibrium quantity uh, uh, goes down to 40k and the price of cigarettes now increases to 100 for that given quantity. So that will be the impact of the tax. The tax will increase the price of the demerit goods and will also reduce the quantity of those goods consumed. So there will be less cigarettes consumed. So that is the impact uh, of a tax. Supply shifts from S to S1, which increases the price from 80 rands to uh, 100 and also reduces the quantity of those goods consumed because they are demerit goods. The government wants people to consume less, so the tax will have that impact. All right, let's look at a maximum price, also called a price ceiling. So the price ceiling is introduced in the market to help consumers. So let's say the market forces here, we've used bread as an example. So let's say the market forces have decided uh, this is the equilibrium price or the market price. It's 25 rands for a loaf of bread. But the government decides that this 25 rands is too high. So some people will not be able to afford it. So the government can set a maximum price below this market price. So the government can set a maximum price below. The maximum price is set below the equilibrium price. So the uh, maximum price is just the horizontal line. So let's say the maximum price is 20 rands. So no producer or no seller is allowed to charge more than 20 rands. So if the government sets the, uh, the maximum price below uh, the market price, no producer or no supplier can charge more than this maximum price. But what the maximum price does, look at the maximum price at the 20 rands the demand is more. Look at the D, the maximum cut, um, price cuts the demand curve over there, but it cuts the supply curve over there, which means there's more demand than there is supply. So this maximum price will result into a shortage in the market, right? It will result into a shortage because there's more demand than there is supply. Now let's look at a minimum price also called the price flow. This price is set above the market price to help producers. Now, let's say the price of uh, a certain product, let's say the price of uh, carrots 
the market decides that the, the carrots should be sold at 5 rands for a given quantity. But the producers will not be able to make profits or survive at, if they sell carrots at 5 rands, according to the market price. So what the government can do is the government can introduce a minimum price above the minimum price is set above the market price. Remember, this is the market price. So the government can set a minimum price above, let's say it's 7 rands. And no one can sell carrots for less than 7 rands in this example. And if you notice, at this minimum price, the supply curve, the minimum price cuts the supply curve over there, but cuts the demand curve over there. So what the minimum price has caused is it has caused a surplus. All right, let's go back. It has caused a surplus. A surplus means there's more supply than there is demand because of the minimum price. Now, the last example of government intervention is a minimum wage. Minimum wages are helped to uh, are introduced to help employees earn a fair wage. Now, let's say uh, the market forces have determined that the wage in the market should be two thousand five hundred francs for one hundred and sixty hours of work. But let's say, for example, the government decides that this price is too low. This wage is too low, right? Uh, people or the workers will not survive on these wages per month. So the government can set a minimum wage above uh, the market wage. Remember, this is the market wage. So the government can set uh, a minimum wage above the market wage. The minimum wage currently in South Africa is 3850 So no employer can pay the employees less than this. But what the minimum wage will, uh, impact of the minimum wage will be the same as the minimum price. There'll be more supply for workers, so there'll be more workers in the market than are demanded by the market. Uh, so there'll be the surplus of workers, too many workers, because of the minimum wage. Thank you, Gritoffs.